a vaster nature's joy. So this is the nature of joy. A vaster nature's joy had once been her. A vaster nature. Brat Shakti. Vast means Brat. Wide. Brat Shakti. Nature. Prakti. Transcendental power. Transcendental nature. Had once been her. Yes, she belongs to that world of Brahat, of joy, of ecstasy, of Satchit Ananda. She belongs to that kind of a place. That had been one thing. She has abandoned that and she had accepted the small conditions of mortality, a vaster nature, Brahat Shakti, transcendental nature, Para Prakriti. But long could not keep its gold heavenly hue or stand upon the brittle earthly base. She has to sacrifice all that to accept the conditions of mortality. Savitri is native to that world of wonder and joy and beauty and love and sweetness and all that thing. But she has accepted now the small conditions stand upon his brittle, earthly, this fragile, breakable base on which he is standing. There is no firmness at all of joy, nor of mortality, of anything at all. He is a brittle baby. But long could keep not his gold, heavenly hue, gold, heavenly hue, the transcendental, the supramental characteristics, the powers, the features, she could not keep here. Because she has accepted the conditions of mortality, of darkness, of ignorance, you will see. It is a great sacrifice Savitri has made. She belongs to the transcendental world with all those great glories. She has given up those things and come here and accepted little, her Aishwarya, her Vaibhava, her royalty, her purple grandeur. She has left behind and she has come here into the dark, murky world and accepted Acclaim their favorite joy. We'll read a small passage from the mother about this one. The divine power, the divine Shakti, the transcendental Mahashakti, when she comes here, the mother not only governs all from above, but she descends into this lesser triple universe. Lesser triple universe universe of mind, life, matter, in the sleep and sleep. Impersonally, all things here, even the movements of ignorance are herself on veil power and a creation is dimly substance. Her nature body and nature force and they exist because moved with the mysterious spirit of the Supreme to work out something to work out something that was there in the possibilities of the infinite. So why she accepts this, this smallness, this littleness? Because there is a possibility of working out something in this little world, in this finite thing. Therefore she accepts that thing. Work out something that was there in the possibilities of the infinite. Yes, in the mortality there is a possibility of the immortal coming and living and doing its work. There is a possibility. She has consented to the great sacrifice and put on like a mask the soul and forms of soul and forms of the ignorance. She has consented. Acclaim. You see, again, fellow, you see, acclaim. But personally, too, she is not only as a universal mother from above. Means this is what the divine goddess could do. But here, in contrast to the omniscient goddess, what has happened here is, but personally, too, she has stooped to descend into the darkness that she may lead it to light. Into the falsehood and error that she may convert it to the truth, into this death that she may turn it to God-like life. Tamaso Maha Jyotir Gumaya. 
It is that chant, you see, that end in the transfiguring ecstasy of a sublime ananda. In her deep and greater love for her children, she has consented to put on herself the cloak of obscurity, condescended to bear the attacks and torturing influences of the powers of darkness and falsehood. Born to pass to the portals of the birth, that is the death. Born to pass the portals of the birth. Well, this is the phrase we have been repeating again and again many times. The portals of the birth, that is the death. She has, she has accepted that condition. She has taken birth so that she can work out through death the possibilities of deathlessness. That is the condition. She has come, born to pass the portals of the birth, that is the death. Now this is exactly, this is the uniqueness of Divine Savitri. No other god or goddess is going to do it. They are happy there. They will help from above there. From their own world they will help everybody. They are not going to take the trouble of passing through the portals of birth and death. They say, okay, we will help you. But we don't want to take the trouble of that kind of a thing, you see. It is the uniqueness of Savitri, that is what we are seeing here, you see. Taken upon herself the pangs and sorrows and sufferings of creation. Since it seems that does alone, you see there is no other way, does alone could it be lifted to the light and joy and truth and eternal life. Only by accepting this condition, it is possible to change condition. The transfiguration and ecstasy comes when you accept these conditions and pass through them. This is the great sacrifice of the Purusha, but much more deeply the holocaust of Prakriti, the sacrifice of the Divine Mother. This is the great sacrifice of the Purusha. This phrase refers to the Vedic Sukta, Purusha Sukta. The Purusha was sacrificed in the Yatna. His head, his limbs, his heart, everything was sacrificed in the earth. And out of them, then the fourfold being arose, you see. But this is the great sacrifice of Purusha Sukta. But actually, it is more than the sacrifice of Purusha or being. It is the sacrifice of Prakriti or the divine nature herself, which is more important here. This is what we have here. A vast nature joy once had been hers. See, this is the sacrifice she has made. The holocaust of the supreme nature. But long could keep not this poor heavenly hue or stand upon this brittle earthly base. In other words, if that vaster nature has to work here, has to be established here, that Brahat Shakti has to work here, then this brittle earthly base has to be changed. The entire work lies now here to change the earthly places, to prepare the ground. Adhara Bhumi has to be kept ready so that the divine powers can come here, stand upon it and do their work. Adhara Bhumi has to be prepared. A narrow moment on time's deep abysm. Life's fragile littleness denied the power, the proud and conscious whiteness, and the bliss she had brought with her into the human form. The calm to life that wished one soul to all, the key to the flaming doors of ecstasy. The narrow moment in time, she has accepted the conditions of mortality. She has condescended to pass the portals of the birth, that is a death. For what? In 
this brittle earthly way lies fragile littleness they had to be changed the proud and conscious wideness and the bliss she had brought with her into the human form she take she has taken the mortal world as a human being she has sacrificed herself totally and what does she see here the, what has she brought here the calm the light that wets one soul to all she in spite of all these conditions her delight her happiness is a shant rasa there is a shant delight harsh rasa calm shant rasa that wets one soul to all so what is the for what the heat the flaming dose of ecstasy the door will open out with that key which key of oneness the key of oneness See, you have to discover your soul and to the discovery of your soul identify yourself with all the other souls it is that key of oneness of all the souls which she has got and with that key she is open the doors the doors of ecstasy the doors of happiness the doors of ananda when there is a unity of all the souls with you you have to identify yourself first with you have to first discover find out your own soul and with that then you have to identify with all the other souls this is what savitri has done she has accepted the mortal condition all these littlenesses all these smallnesses all these sufferings ignominy of this creation she has accepted and in spite of this ignominy she has kept herself very awake to her soul with the discovery of her soul with the identification of her soul with the souls of everybody around she has opened the doors of flaming doors of ecstasy divya galant dwar she has opened for everybody see the key to the flaming doors of ecstasy this is her work and the key for all these things is the oneness in fact this is what we had also seen in the case of ashwapati ashwapati has already established in the transcendent a new world a new creation and his concern was to bring down that new world that new creation upon earth how to do that thing there was only one key and that key was the oneness of each and everything if that is there that thing should also be here because that oneness is all pervasive it can't be that it is there and it cannot be here then the oneness is lost then the oneness is lost so he identifies himself with everything and because of that oneness then he says that the creation can be established here upon the earth new creation can be here savitri has again that the one soul to all ties binds one soul to every other soul that is the real brotherhood the real sense of brotherhood as you call you see soul to soul the psychic relationship of everybody that is the fraternity equality liberty fraternity the fraternity comes here see things then other things will follow automatically see oneness of this soul that is the real fraternity is 